The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Dr. I, Jerry Corsi is our guy. Hey, Doc, I got your book on Hitler, too. I'm about halfway through it. I just wanted to tell you that. Hope you like it, Peter. I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to give it to a friend of mine, and then we'll talk. Okay. Um, I remember, uh, by the way, he's a, a Ph.D. from Harvard. Uh, he writes numbers of books. He has been attacked uh, by people for as long as I've known him, and I've known him a decade. And when we began to speak about just who is this 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, and he was one of the first guys that I heard, hey, talk to Jerry Corsi. And, of course, out of that comes Joel Gilbert and so many other people. And I remember, Doc, I think it was like maybe three and a half, four years ago, the first time you said, and that you'd been to Hawaii, and they you really had, they were really like they treated you in Africa. And you said to me, Peter, there's a new last name. If you would tell the audience what that new last name was, I believe you discovered it first. Yeah, I think I was one of the first to make it public. The uh, Ann Dunham, who's the mother of Obama, on one of her passport applications when she was in Indonesia when Obama was a child, a, a very young child, maybe four years old, ten years old in this span, uh, she applies to essentially, uh, she's removing the name of her child, removing Barack Obama from her passport, and getting him his own passport. Uh, in those days, a mother could have a child put on her passport instead of getting the child a separate passport, and she changes the name of Barack Obama to um, Sori Barka, which is an Indonesian name, S-O-E-B-A-R-K-A-H, and the the form crosses this out, which um, the form indicates you should, you're supposed to do if, in fact, the you're removing the child from your passport, and it's clear that from this that uh, Barry you know, Obama, or now Barry Satoro, uh, the president, as a child, was given somehow or other this Indonesian surname, which strongly suggests that he was given Indonesian citizenship, probably adopted. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's, it was a relevant issue in eligibility mm -hmm. because it could have compromised Barack Obama's eligibility yeah. to be president. Absolutely. Now, what, what's important, and then we'll, we'll push it further. Yes. When you first said that, and it's pronounced soy barca, is that how it's pronounced? Soy barca, yeah. Not that's so how barca. I've been pronounced. Okay. Soy, soy barca. barca. That, that's how they say Indonesian say soy barca. Uh, right. And I've gotten some email this morning say you're mispronouncing the, the the name, and I'm totally capable of that. So with apologies. So it's soy. The e is the e is strong. Soy that's barca. That's how I've that's how okay. I've been taught okay. to say it. I Fair don't enough. know that. Yes, okay. I, I don't know enough Indonesian to know. <laughs> so when that happened, and Jerry became the worst human being. In the history of talk radio, as I say, we were Nazis, we were Klansmen, we were bigots, we were right. racist, we were this, we were that, we were this, we were that. I added silver shirts this morning just to <laughs> okay. put, a, put, a, put an edge on it, right? But we, right. I, we, we were everybody. And because this didn't, this never happened. There was no Soy Barca character. So now, what has turned up? Well, the this association, after uh, Loretta Fuddy died... Um, this religious group, uh, they're often called a sect, which is a subud, S-U-B-U-D. That's how that's, that's pronounced as well? I've been so, saying... Su, subud. Say it's like S-O-E-B-O-O-D is how you say right, it. Let me say Let me write that down. S subud. <clears throat> Excuse me, subud is how they say it. Subud. Okay. All right, gotcha. And it's named after a, uh, a guy, right? Indonesian Muslim named Muhammad, etc., etc., subud who created this, he, he was born in 1901, he died in 1987, and he created this cult, which was a um, sort of a meditation, although it's a very free-form meditation, in which you're supposed to identify with the God force, and the God force is supposed to give you instructions or center your life. And they, the Sabud members meditate in groups, there's only about 20,000 of them in the world, but... Um, Loretta Fuddy, the Hawaii Department of Health head, who's certified, or she went in and in, uh, into this position like in March 2011, and by April, like within two months, she is certifying that Obama's mm -hmm. appointment, his birth certificate is that they issue in the White House a long form, and 
on April 27, 2011, I'm about to publish a book on questioning, you know, where's mm-hmm. the real birth certificate? Yeah, birth I remember that, sure, quite well. And, okay, and she is the one who certified it. Well, mm-hmm. Saboud the, comes out and says she's a member. In fact, not only was she a member, she was the, you know, the grand poobah, the grand head of the Saboud cult in America for years 2006 through 2008. And to further verify it, um, you know, researchers very quickly found a Honolulu Advertiser article from 2011 with a picture of Loretta Fuddy meditating at a Sabood center. Mm-hmm. And this was, you know, circulated around the mm-hmm. Internet very broadly. What was, if I may, and between, and again, that, that book that was a horrible book, Janie Scott's biography. Yes, uh-huh. uh, You know, and anybody who read, and I did, A Singular Woman, The Untold Story of Barack Obama's Mother, that became a New York Times bestseller done by a woman by the name of Janie Scott, and uh, Jack Cashel is an expert on this, but, it, I mean, the whole book is just not true. It's like everything else. But what is the relationship between Barack Obama's mother and the, sub, the subdued cult and um, and Loretta Fuddy? Well, Subud comes out and has a, they have a newsletter in 2011, right after Fuddy's appointed, and they're saying, boy, now we've got one of ours in a position to help Obama. And by the way, her mother is associated with Sabood and Dunham. And um, that was kind of an anonymous letter written into this publication, a Sabood publication, and published. So it kind of suggested that there was a relationship. And the evidence was this Jenny, Jenny, uh, Jenny Scott's book. Scott's yeah, book. right. Yeah, she talks and, about it. Yeah. Well, she talks about a couple of instances where Ann Dunham appoints Sabood members right. to teaching positions. And it's clear... I mean, I also know Wayne Madsen, who was, you know, former Naval Intelligence, and Wayne is in Washington. He writes a newsletter. Mm-hmm. Wayne spent a, a month in Indonesia in 2011 tracking down the Obamas. And um, this, the Sabood cult is one that Ann Dunham had to be aware of mm-hmm. in Indonesia. It would, it's, it's unimaginable she didn't know about it. Um, and I think she had sympathy for it because she produces this whole micro banking initiative with Ford in Indonesia and all through that part of the world, uh, at the same time that Subud himself, the founder of the sect, is um, instituting world banking as an initiative for the group. Mm-hmm. They're just too much on theme together. Yeah. Uh, and that I'm never affirmed or claimed or you know, participated actively in the set. I can't find that Ann Dunham participated in any religion actively. Was she linked to Loretta Fuddy? Um, I don't know that the two even knew each other. All right. It's Sabood who's claiming the association. Well, if the truth, I mean, one, in that Honolulu Advertiser article, Sabood yeah. comes in Hawaii about the same time that she does. Well, and, you know, it is, it's, it, she knew, she had to have known about Sabood simply because Anyone involved with New Age religions at the time, and you know, one of the people she hired from Sabood in Indonesia, she was very close to, and this guy was very prominent in Sabood. He would have been talking about it all the time. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Everybody, you know, that's his reputation. Uh, the, the key part about it is that the Sabood sect changes names. So, for instance, um, Loretta Fuddy had his new name, Delilah, who would, nobody ever she heard about. Changes her it. name. That's right. Yeah. And so the the argument is that if Ann Dunham was coming into this cult, it would have been a opportunity. Ann Dunham changes her name, which has never been explained. She starts spelling her name instead of S O E T O R O S U T O R O, unexplained, and um, she changes Barack Obama's name, which is the kind of thing the cult members tend to do. Yeah, that's true. Again, that's yeah. not proof she was part of the cult. There could be other reasons she changed all these names. Jerry, but it is very interesting and very suspicious. This is one of the best guys. It's uh, 9 after the hour, 7.09. Please go to the website, 710knus.com, and follow along at home. You can see these 1968 apps. Now, as you and uh, and the greats have said, Anne's 65 passport, like so many other things, has been destroyed. But right. if, if we look at these two, the 68 app that's up on the website, 710knus.com, there's two pages. Yes. Now, in the, we have Stanley Ann's 68 app to extend her 65 passport, which has been destroyed for an additional two years. That's, right. That's the first figure. On the second yes. page of the app, Ann moves to exclude her son. Correct. And that's where the name Sue Soibakas shows up. Shows up. 
Yes. What does it mean? It means that it, she was trying to get a separate passport for well, her why son. That, why that name? Because he must have had an Indonesian um, identity at this time, probably legal identity, to have Soy Barca mm. attached to his name. And Soy Barca, if you, you know, if you analyze the the language, Indonesian language, it really means um, son of Soitoro. And Satoru was the, the guy that she was married to. Right. The bar oh. is the oh. bar is very much like you know okay. Bin Laden or yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. John's son. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, it's when they say um, soy bar. Well, that's son of. I see. Okay. Well, what's what's and, interesting? Remember when we talked about him attending the two Muslim schools? And they weren't. They weren't. Um, it's important to say uh, that 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 you had to be. Every, how do I say this? Number one, you had to be a citizen of Indonesia. Yes. And then number two, you had to be a Muslim. Yes. To go and, to, I mean, whether it's public school or private school, you had... And in fact, that's right. And Wayne, Wayne Madsen, when he was over there, brought me back to laws in Indonesia, and I've had them translated. It was very clear that the only way Obama, as a child, mm -hmm. got into the schools that he was enrolled in, in Indonesia, was if the... If, if Sartoro, his stepfather, could mm -hmm. take him over and say, this is my legal son. Right. And so he wasn't going to get the schools unless he was an Indonesian citizen. Yeah. So I mean, and, and they were not they weren't madrasas. That's important. They were they, not madrasas. But they were. So really, these were. Yeah. Well, they were. One was even a Catholic school. That's right. <laughs> but That's right. they offered Islamic instruction, mm -hmm. and Obama was enrolled in the Islamic instruction in the Catholic school. Much like this, uh, this effort now to make Muslim holidays into American public schools, which is being pressed on Barack Obama right now. But the same thing is true. You, they were Muslim schools. You had to be a citizen of Indonesia, and you had to be at least proclaimed to be a Muslim. So See, this, this was this was after the period of 1965 right. when the Suharto uh, revolution had a coup d'état. Really, mm -hmm. had over a CIA engineered mm -hmm. coup d'état. Right. right. And by the way, um, uh, Subak is uh, is really. Um, uh, he is identified with CIA by okay. Sukarno, who's overthrown. And when they, the revolution, the Muslims took over. Mm -hmm. They killed the PKI, which mm -hmm. were the communists. Mm -hmm. They killed Christians. Mm -hmm. And so the surviving power in Indonesia after 1965 was Muslim. And they restated the laws so that you know you couldn't. They really were anti-Christian at this point. So, if I um, could, if I'm going to come back to the. And by the way, have you seen the picture of the founder? Yes. As a young man, how remarkably he, he looks, looks like. like a, he looks like Obama. He's like, I know. It's, yeah, I, it's have, crazy. I have not figured that out at I, all. I, I, re no. it looks resemblance like is uncanny. Jerry Corsi is with us. Our website, 710knus.com. You'll see, first of all, to make the case, the certificate of live birth, where the race of the father says African, it's impossible. Now. The other one is the second page of the application. And both of the pages are up there, and this is good work by this fellow Nick Chase. And Nick Chase gets into freedom of information and gets, you have to know exactly what to ask for. So they did. So the Barack Hussein Obama, is he Saturo? Who is he? Sir, Sir, Sir Baca from his passport. And the item's been crossed out. Now, one of the things that we're going to listen to here in the next guest is that Maybe on, <clears throat> excuse me, on the advice from the consulate, and which, and he's seven at the time, so it would leave him passportless, so it doesn't happen. Is that fair? Uh, it's possible, Peter. But as I look at that passport application, she followed the instructions to get a huh? separate passport, and I would think she got a separate passport because a uh, little Barry starts traveling on his own back to the United States, and she would have had to have a passport for him. Okay. But he would travel on an Indonesian passport. I think she got him an Indonesian passport, no. or she may have attempted to get him a U.S. passport as an Indonesian citizen. It okay. might have been denied. Now, remember when he made he made the speech, and no one ever knew who he traveled with or who he went with when he went to Pakistan. They were his roommates at Columbia, and remember the Colombian policy at the time was foreign nationals lived together, roomed together. And he lived with two Pakistani Muslim guys at Columbia. We're led to believe that, but those records have been suppressed. Having said that, then he says, well, I went to, he goes to Pakistan. Remember, he makes the speech in San Francisco that he, quote, went back to Indonesia first to, quote, visit his mother, 
Well, yes. his mother wasn't there. She was already back in Hawaii. She was right. not there. So that was a lie. And then it leads the, you know, the, the proto-Obama people to say he went to Jakarta to get his passport renewed because traveling to Pakistan at that time for an American citizen, it wasn't illegal, but it was advised not to go. Well, and, and did he go it, there? On, on, did he go there on his citizenship passport from Indonesia? He's a grown man. Uh, it, see, first of all, I think that for, one thing about Obama was records of himself and his discussions of his life, it's all messed up. Yeah. Obama frequently makes mistakes in his personal history. Janie Scott's book says Obama went back to Indonesia any number of times to visit the mother through college. My guess has always been that Obama had an Indonesian passport. Because of the way he was traveling, he was going to Singapore, oh, yeah. he went to Pakistan, uh, it appears he went to India. Obama seems to have traveled very widely and not fully documented. In other words, we don't have the full record of all the trips Obama made in these, you know, years through college or through maybe or, even through Harvard. Or who he went with. Or who he went with or what he was doing or, you know, it's, or what passport he traveled on. Because we don't have Obama's, we have some of the mm-hmm. mother's passports, right. but we don't have any of Obama's yeah. passports yeah. except for the most current. And that's the one that was even, remember that picture? And when yes. they showed it and it was, they distorted well, the numbers, there was craziness. And remember also that the current head of the CIA, uh, it, kind of Brennan, a, his, his private security force was yeah. found breaking into the passport records right. in 2008 right. before the election, right. getting Barack Obama's, and the, they, they get, grab some, I believe, from Clinton mm-hmm. and Hillary and from McCain. Mm-hmm. But the report coming out was it was done to sanitize Obama's passport and records. And, of course, we've seen, it, we've seen it before. Brennan is now head of the CIA, yeah. Yeah. was brought into the White House as a counterterrorism expert, uh, is himself fluent in Islam, mm-hmm. Has given endless speeches in mm-hmm. support of Islam. Mm-hmm. Uh, widely speculated he may have at some point in his life converted to Islam. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brennan's heading the CIA. Uh, all of this stuff has never been fully explained. That's the problem: is mm-hmm. that these questions have been raised, they've never been answered. We still do not have Barack Obama's passport records. We still do not have his travel records. We don't know. Medical when, records, school records. School yeah, records. Uh, uh, loan records. Grade, uh, all of it. Yeah. All of it. None of that's ever been forthcoming. So and probably, you know, probably much of it's been destroyed. I mean, or attempted to be destroyed. But this is looked at objectively and from a distance. Barack Obama appears to be like a CIA created yeah. person with a fictional identity right. or partially fictionalized identity what, what, what that would is you, really undiscernible. Jerry Corsi is with us. What would you leave us with this morning? Now, we put up on the website, 710knus.com. Jerry, were you ever able to find anyone in the time period, five, six years before, five, six years after, born in Hawaii, who had a father's race of African on their birth No, certificate? that's, that's uh, still unique. And, you know, the, the two things about the, this whole case... Uh, Fuddy refused to re- release mm-hmm. original documents out of the file. We've seen no 1960s. We've seen computer printouts and modern day mm-hmm. computer verifications of birth. We have not seen the original records even today. And secondly, the hospital. First, they, the family said it was one hospital, then they, it was Queens Switched Medical. It, right. So they switched it over to Capulani. Right, right. Despite repeated efforts, I've even gone to Capulani myself. Kapilani refuses to show any records, and I've been told no hospital in Hawaii appears to have original records of Ann Dunham, and and there's no photographs of Ann Dunham being pregnant. You know, the the INS INS did not believe that Barack Obama Sr. was the father. The two never lived together as husband and wife. Never were married. Never were married. No marriage certificate ever been found. She leaves for Seattle when the baby's about two weeks of age. And lied about it, and even yeah. Jan, yeah. Jan, Janie, Janie Scott's yeah. book yeah. kind of fudges that, yeah. but grudgingly admits that Ann Dunham was not in Hawaii when Barack Obama Sr. Barack Obama Sr. gives interviews, mm-hmm. doesn't mention when he's in Hawaii, doesn't mention that he is married yeah. or has a child. None of, none of his colleagues ever forgets even... To yeah. put it, forgets to put his child and his wife on yeah. his... Passport visa extensions. Yeah, I mean, it goes on and on and on. But the 
the credibility that Barack Obama Sr. is really the father is highly thin, and there is some, I've always maintained, there is some deep birth mystery about who Obama is, and we still, we've, we, we, we have all of the evidence that a mystery exists, yeah. but we don't have yet the solution of it. And, you know, I wanna, seeing I wanna, these pictures from Indonesia is another bizarre, another element me, in the puzzle. Let me do this. We, we have a time constraint this morning. Yes, On Monday, Monday, I'm going to have you back. Sure. And we'll see I'm going to try to publish this article on yeah, Monday. Yeah, I want, doing uh, yeah, this I wanna, right we'll read, and then I'll have you back on Monday, Doctor. Have a great weekend. You always, okay. you're, you're such a worker. Thank you, sir. Dr. Jerry Corsi. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.